right, SCAers, welcome, welcome, welcome back to the channel. I know you guys think that I softly walked away in the night, but before we get into what the preview has showed you, I want to take a minute to say happy holidays to all of you and your family. I hope you had a good Christmas, and I hope you have a good New Year's. If I do this right, this will come out tonight, and it's New Year's Eve. So, wanting to get this video out fast, let's quickly dive into what we got here, which I think is a gem, again, from Hoppa. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is an Umbrella Armory Oka. This is an older model. The user has really used it, and good on him. You buy a gun to this caliper, you want to be able to just put it through its paces and never worry about it. And you can tell there's wear and tear on this as we do the close-ups. So this is exactly how I got it. He left the peck box on here. He left the Surefire Scout replica on here. Uh, he left this grip on here. This has one of those uh, Mission First, I believe, uh, minimalist stock on it. And I always wanted to try one of these. They always look cool um, online. As you can see right here, he has put this exterior pouch on here. Um, he had a big brick battery. I don't have any of those. He cut a hole in the stock and ran the Dean's connector through here so he could connect his batteries. I'm the type of guy that's always for like a clean look. Like I don't usually like stuff like that. But I'll tell you what, I hooked this up. I slapped my battery in here. It's so easy to go like this. Put your battery in here and plug it in to pull the stock off or taking the cover off and feeding it in right so you don't pinch any of the wires. Sometimes things like this, even though it's not the nicest looking thing, but sometimes it's the easiest and functional way to go. Like, it's so easy. So you come down here, it has the Oka upper and lower receiver. Umbrella armory on this side. And like all the other Oka up and lower receivers for your selector switch, when it's on safe is depression. When it's on semi, it's called revolution. When you're on full auto, it's called freedom. Um, you come down, you get your PTS grip with your tail cap here. You come up front, and this is where I don't know if they built an OCA with the PTS Sentry Arms rail on it, which this is a really neat rail, I like that. And the only other reason why I don't think this was the original rail, I don't know. I, like, I don't know for sure. Is when I pull this upper receiver off to show you what's going on, the barrel's real short. Shorter than it needs to be for this rail. So was this like a PDW Oka build? I, I don't know. I don't know everything about these yet. I'm trying to do research. So yeah, um, I got this for 425 shipped. And these are what? I don't know what they were years ago maybe they were only 15 1600 they're up to two thousand dollars now so it is beat up it does need maintenance one of the things he said to me right away and was in the post that uh, this trigger gets stuck back sometimes and you can hear it and there it is it's stuck back and you're gonna push it forward and then the mosfet that's in here which is another thing this is not a titan in here it is an electronic mosfet you plug in the battery, it doesn't do its Titan beeps. I grabbed my laptop and plugged into the Titan app, the gate app, I should say, and it wouldn't read it no matter what I did. So I don't know if there's a BC Spectrum in here or one of the older school MOSFETs like that. I don't know. I am gonna be tearing this down because it really needs to be gone through, like here. So the grip is loose, we're missing the smaller pin in the middle of the, the lower receiver so this whole thing is loose there's a lot of play in your upper receiver even this rail itself you can hear that is loose like i said he he, he put this thing through the paces and this is cool to have just for that to see how these things hold up even though it's having some issues and the things are loose this thing sounds crisp still you know that umbrella techs really know what they're doing. Can we argue prices on things? We can, and we will on this channel, because I have some other umbrella ones that I've gotten recently to do those kinds of research. But I plug this in and I'm really impressed what this does with all this wear and tear and mileage on it. So before we take the upper receiver off, PTS Battle Comp uh, flash hider, I believe. Really cool, I like that. I really like this setup, actually. When I took this out, at first I'm like, oh, but then I was like, huh, 
this is actually pretty cool. How big this is, do I use it all? No, but it's just pretty cool that it's that way. Um, if I stay with that look though, this is gonna come off. This is some kind of cheap grip. You pull these little tabs back on here, right? And it comes off the rail. There's no real screws to it to really grip. That's why it has play. But still, I, for some reason, I, I like the look of it. The tan, the little bit of tan on here, um, when the stock and the grip and nothing else is tan, I'm not sure. Do I hate it? No. But I'm still not sure about it. <laughs> so when you see the pictures of these, you let me know in the comment if I should leave the tan or switch stuff over to black, or should I continue with the tan with getting a grip like this in tan, a stock in tan. The problem with switching the grip is, even though I'm gonna pull this apart, I'm gonna keep the shimming their way. I'm gonna keep all the internals their way. So I can't really, unless I get the same exact PTS grip to switch it out, that's gonna ruin the angle of the motor. I don't wanna change any of that. I wanna go in there, re-grease it, clean it up. But like I said, keep the shimming and stuff the same. All right, let's get this upper receiver off. Well, no, let's plug the battery in so you can hear what it's doing, the problem is, and but listen to how crisp it still sounds. And here we go guys, I got my Titan Dumbchuck Dean's battery. So let me show you what I'm talking about with the functionality of this bag. All right, flip that open. It's already in. Now listen, there's no beep. There's some buzz in the grip. But look, so, so fast to hook it up. It's ready to go. You got wires sticking out. May, may get caught on things. Let's listen to how this baby still sounds. Such a smooth and fast trigger. And here's the other things going on with it guys, and it's not doing the trigger thing right now. Maybe because I'm just easily pushing it back, but there, now it's stuck. You gotta push it forward. So, also what's going on is you can put this on safe. Same thing, semi, same thing, full auto. Look how fast that is. Uh, so it's all semi, on all. And there, now it's angry. There it is, angry again. So, but it sounds sounds like someone just put this together. And this has got a lot of miles on it. 425 for this. Beat up, there's scratches all over this thing. Is a better buy than any brand new AEG out of the box. It really is. It's gonna need some fixing up. I don't know, well, I don't think we'll need much at all. I'll have to find out what the MOSFET problem is and why I'm not getting safe semi and full auto. All right, let me get this upper receiver off and show you what I'm talking about, the barrel length. It is the Retro Arms gearbox, one of the best in the business. Funny that they have a full cylinder on here, like I said, I don't know what changes, if any, have been done to this. So if this has come from umbrella armories like that, why do they have a full cylinder, right? And look at this barrel length. Why is this barrel that small? It had to be something else. There had to be a different rail on here. Pro and hop up, they're R hop. I don't think this is a Prometheus barrel, unless when they're that short, they don't do their O-ring things at the end. I see a blue bucking in there that could be the Prometheus blue and it's R hopped. Guys, that's tiny. You know what the funny thing is? You put four O's in here with this R hop. I can go outside and do 150 easy and it, it can do more. That's all, I, that's the only range I got. 150 to test this. All right guys, so there you have it. That's all I'm gonna talk about on this for now until I get more into it. Now. I just want to talk about something really quick now. Um, I told you I'm going to tear this down. I am going to tear this down, but it will be on my new, brand new channel. I'm going to launch 
late January 2022. Um, it's going to be strictly like a tech channel. This channel, I go all over the place. I haven't really found my niche. This channel will go on because I actually have fun just jumping around doing different things. Uh, the new channel is going to be all about teching. It's going to be a teching type channel where the, you're going to see the camera view down here as I work on stuff. I already got a lot of footage going for that for all different types of guns. This will be a fun one tearing apart an umbrella armory gun to see how they make it work. What makes this tick? The Oka. That's another reason why I got this, to be able to do that. But I'm already in love with this rifle. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Would I buy one of these brand new? I just, I, can't, I just can't hand over that much cash. And for someone who can do tech work, I've done a lot of builds lately, which you'll see on the new channel. I can do something like this on my own. If you're not that, I don't know if I'd still tell you to spend that kind of money on, on something like this, but if you can find something used and you can tech on it, or you have a friend that's a tech that can kind of go through the gun, yeah, then they're worth it. Definitely worth it. Don't even think a second thought about it. Just get it. So with all that said, the new channel will be Vertigo Builds. I'm starting a tech venture where I will take in guns. I've already been doing that for a while, but I'll take in guns. I tech, I build custom builds, sniper work, AEG work. Waiting to find the right price on an HPA setup to start tinkering on that. I have never messed with an HPA setup, so none of that right now will I be taking in, but down the road, hopefully I will. But yeah. So we'll cut to doing a chrono test on here. I don't know what it does on full auto because it's not doing full auto. And, uh, but that's it. That's it from me tonight. Um, like I said, I'm hoping to have this uploaded for New Year's Eve. So if it is, happy New Year's to you tomorrow. Thank you for watching. All right guys, this chrono test will be done with .32s. I don't have any two O's right now, but if you can see, on the chrono except for 0.32s mostly look at the jewels and here we go 129 don't know why it jumps up to 18 one two eight, one two nine, one two eight. So you can see we're right around 290 with three twos and right around 1.28, 1.27, 1.26 joules. There might be a slight air leak. Um, you can tell it has a smaller spring in it. I don't know if it has a 100. Don't think it would have a 110 if it's with the compression parts I think it has. All right, guys.